Hi, everybody. We are a couple minutes late, but here is our wonderful Jessica Bush, and we Morning. are here um, with her. She is from a Tudor doctor of Bergen. Yep. You put Ber North Bergen and Rockland County, right? Yep. Um, we've had her on a few times. She is one of our amazing bloggers, and she always brings really awesome stuff to the table when it comes to parenting, and she takes tutoring and it's not just about academics. Um, it's a lot about the mental health aspect of um, what's how going we are, on with our kids. Yeah, what's going on with our kids. So we talked earlier this week. Hi, Fern. How are you? Hi, Fern. Um, and I'm sorry. Hopefully we can see the comments. Sometimes when the the, the phone's set like this, because we're on the iPhone right now, sometimes the comments don't come up. So hopefully we'll see them. If, just give me a second. I'm going to see if... No, that's not it. No, we'll see. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully the comments, come hopefully the comments will come up. So there, unfortunately, um, Bergen County was hit with another uh, suicide, teen suicide um, in Northern Highlands uh, last week. And uh, prayers and blessings uh, go out to all of those who are affected, the families and everybody, friends and family. all the friends, the community, um, not just Northern Highlands community, but every time I hear about something like this that happens, uh, in in Bergen County or in the surrounding counties, um, it really breaks my heart. And we were talking about it earlier this week, and we had planned to come out on Facebook Live and kind of talk about it. But we felt like there we needed to figure out the way to discuss it and find out what you guys want to talk about, what you want to hear, what kind of support you need. Because you know, the minute this conversation comes up and you start talking about mental health. Um, anxiety, depression, suicide um, amongst our kids and our families, more so our kids, everybody kind of shuts down. Yep. Because nobody really wants to really kind of think about that being even being possible in their own families. So um, we've had a lot of dialogue and we're trying to come up a w with a way to kind of talk about this in a way that feels comfortable. Um, to offer support and tips on how to deal with things that are going on at home. So I'm going to like pass it over to Jessica, and if you want to just kind of tell me kind of your take on it and the things that you've seen, um, you know, with your, with your families and your students. Yeah. First thing I want to say also, you know, there's also with the whole college prep scandal thing that's going on, is I want to say I'm really proud of our students uh, that are working really hard with us in my business. Um, they're really, really working hard. And it's tough out there. It's really tough out there uh, in the high school, even in the middle school world for the kids. And I'm not sure that, that the parents always totally understand what the kids are up against. You know, uh, social pressures are huge. We can't compare it to the way it was, you know, when we were when we were in school. And, and yes. that's something that that I think, you know, parents always say, well, when when I was you can't you can't even fathom what they're doing. And I was thinking about right this now. because I've been thinking about it since yesterday and thinking about it this morning about how how we were kind of going to broach this topic. And I've said this many times over the last um several weeks actually that the way that we were raised the way that our parents raised us what we the generations that we grew up in um even the kids you know the moms right now who are you know in their late 20s and early 30s it's even different they, it's so di it's yeah. not it's not no one no one knows how we're we're starting out all over like new well, it's like inventing a whole entire new wheel because we didn't have to deal with any of this stuff right, i like, was talking to uh at a networking meeting yesterday i was talking to um uh, a young woman who's 28 and I was talking to her sort of about this stuff. And mm -hmm. she she was even saying that she's talking to some of the high school kids and mm -hmm. it's almost like speaking a different language. Yeah. And she wants to know, and she wants to know what is the language that the kids are speaking these days, what's going on. And even being in her mid to late twenties, it's changed. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm 58, you're 42, 42 you know, but we can't compare anything that's going on to either what even what you or I or this 28 year old went through. Yeah. It's even different. Then. Yeah. And their social pressures and everything are so different now. So um, different. Not, I wouldn't even say just social. I mean, social academic because of the uh, of the, the internet media. and social media. Oh, great. We do have comments here. Yeah, I just want to be able to see this whole entire 
comment That's right. Here. Nine Jamie year old, Lynn. So much anxiety. My nine year old already. is already giving herself so much anxiety about what the other girls at school have, where, etc. Talking about how people won't like her if she doesn't yep. have the right pencil case or pencil sharpener. It's very sad. It makes me so sad. Thank you so much for sharing that, sharing that, that yeah. because these are the things that we need to talk about. Um, and, you know, I think that over, you know, generations that these sorts of things are very common. However, it's just gotten worse and worse, you know, with, with social and media. And also, Jamie, what you were saying is it's so much more sort of visible because they're on their phones and their social media all the time and they're constantly comparing because the image is out there, you know, whereas it never used to be that way. I mean, we never saw, how did you see anything? You saw each other face to face. You didn't see each other out on social media. And what they don't understand, and as they get older, they realize that a lot of the, especially the girls that are on their phones or the kids, they put something on social media to create an image of what they want you to perceive that they are, but it's not necessarily reality, mm -hmm. the reality of what they are. And I know for a fact that, you know, a lot of times in high school, they'll take photos of each other holding the red solo cups, okay? And that represents their partying mm -hmm. or their drinking, and they may not even be drinking. They're right. just putting up an image of them hanging out with the red right. solo and cup. and Jamie, you're right. This is even, yes, without social media, though. This this is, yeah, these are, and you know what I want to, I just want to um, point something out. You know, I've lived in several different places. I'm from Illinois. Um, I lived in Chicago. I've lived in the suburbs of Chicago. I lived out west um, in Wyoming and Idaho. I've been, traveled to a lot of different places. And where we live here in Bergen County, there is a lot of pressure here in Bergen County. My daughter, just the other day, um, I took her and um, her friend and my, my son and his friend. We all went to the city. And the street vendors were out in uh, down on Canal Street in Chinatown, and you know they're selling the the, the glasses for five dollars, the sunglasses for five dollars, and there's these specific kinds of sunglasses, and they're called clout glasses, and I they're a brand or something, and I didn't know that they had a specific name, but they were five bucks, so they got a pair. We took pictures, and it was really cute. And I said, oh, you guys, you guys can wear them to school in next week or something, and they were like, oh no no no, they're like these are fakes. Like if we wear these to school, the kids will make fun of us. And I, we were walking, and I said, really? Will they really make fun of you because they're not real. She's like, oh yeah, they'll say something about them not being real. So I do think too, there are certain specific sorts of pressures here in this county because everything is just, you know, everybody's like just Com competition, competition, a lot trying to survive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But Jamie, what you were saying, it's definitely a mean girl thing. It's a mean girl thing. And, and I don't know what it comes from. Um, but it's starting younger and younger. So what Jamie's trying, you know, saying that she's got a nine-year-old who's not even on social media yet. And so this, for me, letting my, mean. yeah, they're already doing this. And this is a, a prime opportunity for you at the age of nine, or even if your kids are younger, nine, eight, seven, six, to be able to start giving them um, the coping kind of tools yeah, to deal with this kind of stuff. You really have to try to build up your kids' um, independence and, and self-esteem because n at nine years old, she's dealing with this stuff right now. And I had a really hard time letting my you know daughter, um, we had a lot of talks, family meetings with my ex-husband in Georgia on the phone about letting her get on Instagram. Yeah. Because I said, there's a lot of things that can, can, a lot of struggles you could end up having or problems you might have being on Instagram and, and all these pressures and Snapchat, and, Snapchat and, and all these one. big, yeah. these social media platforms. And yeah, so it's starting out now but it gets even worse as they as they start to trickle over into you know the social media and hanging yeah. out outside of the, being more outside of the home than they are yeah. necessarily with their friends in the house um so yeah it's like it's really important i'd love to know what to say when she tells me when she needs she... this so her friends will like her wow that's a big thing about a phone, right? I mean, is she bugging you about a phone probably right now that, you know, if she doesn't have a phone, she's going to feel left out and they're going to make fun of her or something like that? Yeah, um, this is a really, really tough situation. Um, what I did with my with my daughter, um, but then we lived in a community that wasn't, in, you know, our community where we live is not the same. I mean, we're, we're not in Bergen County. Um, we have a lot of diversity and a lot of struggling people in our town. And I actually think that that was a positive thing mm -hmm. for my daughter because she wasn't necessarily raised that way, thank goodness. Um, but it's always, you're, they're always comparing with each other. And, and 
Uh, I, I think you just have to instill values in her. Maybe Fern has some feedback on this. I think you have to instill values that it's not about what you have. It's about who you are inside. And, and that's and a really, that's a really tough rope to walk. It's really tough. Because, you know, you want to teach your kids that, you know, I, I, for me, if this was my situation with my children and I, you know, we've definitely had talks about this. My, my son is nine going on 10 and my daughter just turned 12. And, um, I always tell them that it's not about the number of friends that you have, right? I always say it's about the quality of friends that you have. It's all about respect. You know, hopefully you're respected at school and it's important to, again, quality versus quantity. But um, it's hard to tell your your child and say, you know what, if they're not going to like you because you don't have the latest, greatest stuff or if you don't have a phone or or oh you don't have social media because they do a lot of they do a lot of communicating over like Snapchat and Instagram and that sort of thing. It's really hard because So they're making fun of her because of notebooks, pencils and little things like that? Wow. Okay. So so what I but I don't right. I don't blame you. So what what I would say to my daughter uh it, you know if if she wants little notebooks and pencils and things like that, you know, I don't personally I don't think that's a big deal. Um but it's not necessarily feeding into it. It's what's really popular right now with the kids. Um, I think that, you know, that that's okay mm -hmm. to a certain extent. Uh, but when you're talking about, you know, as they get older, you'll see as they're talking about, you know, specific po pocketbooks. That's for me, it was, it was handbags and pocketbooks and tote bags and Michael Kors and Coach and um what's the you know the name yeah. of the french one yeah. you know that i <laughs> you know the pocketbooks with the kid with the girls in high school is huge yeah you know and i went and 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 bought foach you know what i mean i bought foach, foach. i wanted <laughs> foach i'm like what foach, foach. oh fake coach. coach i got right. it foach yeah well listen I, I for me like you know when the kids were when kids were younger and i really was did not have any money like i did not have any money um you know i would get them what i could um, now that my financial situation is a little bit better, I, you know, when it comes to things like notebooks and pencils and pens and maybe toys, and if there's something that you can fit into your budget and it's not going to break you, I don't think that's that big of a deal. But if you're going to say, okay, I, it's a good, it's a good opportunity for a conversation. A right, so teach. yeah. Okay. I'll go buy you your special pencils and your special notebooks, but let's have a conversation about what friendships really look like and whether or not you, that's someone you want to hang out with or have in your life. I mean, believe it or not, and this is the other thing I just want to say, our kids, they do understand more at this age than okay. we get, many of us give them give us credit, credit for. So don't feel like you have to get down to like even a four, you know, like the, the four year old level to talk to your nine year old. Nine year olds, they're getting to a point in their life where they, they want to be respected and they want to be talked to, not like they're an adult, but not be talked to like they're, you right. know, four, four years old. So it's a good, it's a good opportunity for, for um, a conversation. So then you can talk about what's going to happen in the next two, three, Couple four years, years right. when it's not just notebooks and it's not just pencils. Now it's the handbags. And my daughter just Shoes. told me that Skechers, I just heard from another Shoes. mom, Skechers aren't cool anymore. No, they're not. They're not cool anymore. <laughs> no. You better not wear Nike. Skechers. You better Puma. not wear. Yeah, you better not wear Skechers to school. Otherwise, you're gonna get made fun of. It's like, oh my so gosh, you know what? You go to the you outlet. Know? You go to the outlet. I mean, you. I, yeah. I taught my daughter get coupons. Go to the outlet. You know, uh, if you need to wear that Nike, go to the outlet and let's get some Nikes that are you know half the price or whatever. So I wanted to kind of transition over. We were just talking before we got on Facebook Live, and we were talking about there's. I mean, there's serious. I mean, epidemic going on. And when we think epidemic, we're thinking, you know, tens of hundreds of people, but we've had so many suicides, suicides. attempted suicides amongst teenagers, children. I'm not even teenagers. We're just talking younger kids, like who are in what? Seventh eighth. grade, eighth grade, um, and with adults as well in Bergen and County. Adults. Um, and I want to point out something first. Um, a lot of people, I talked to different people about mental health within our community and there is this, there's still stigma and there is this misconception that, oh, we live in Bergen County. These numbers are alarming. This shouldn't happen in Bergen County. This should happen like in Passaic County. Okay. And I, and I had this conversation with a couple of people. I said, well, why should this not happen? Why is it so unbelievable in Bergen County versus Passaic? I said, 
a lot of those kids who live in places like Passaic and Patterson and whatnot, and again, and I'm not like generalizing here, but those kids are brought up to survive. They're survivors. They know how to get out on the street and they survive. Where we here in Bergen County are way more privileged. I'm just going to say that we are way more privileged. A lot of us are, not everyone, but many are privileged. And um, and we think that nothing can touch us, really. So we think, oh, our kids, but but we're not looking at it from the perspective of like, our children they're human beings like they deal with anxiety and they deal with like struggles they don't it's not just like oh you know your kids from this age to this age are like just innocent and they're having fun and whatnot um what well, we have some work that makes me sad to rely on respect for friendship when life is all about belonging yeah the, the thing that i wanted to say about that is 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 i think that we also i think i see parent it's all about fear it's a fear factor in the parents Right. You know, um, to protect, you know, and, and to um, so that nothing happens mm -hmm. to their kids. But mm -hmm. I I personally feel and you uh, people may not agree with me. Right. That's fine. That in instilling fear in your kids, you're doing them a disservice mm -hmm. Because, you know, our kids are our models, especially when they're little. They're they're going to see and they're going to hear and they're going to do what we do. Mm -hmm. You know, and I talk about if we're going to bring it back to academics for a second. You know, a lot of kids that are in elementary school, one thing, you know, they're, and they're struggling with reading. A lot of times I say to their parent, well, do you read? Well, no. They don't see, their, they don't see us reading. Mm -hmm. They don't see us sitting with a book and reading. And then we say, well, why aren't you reading? Why don't you read? Why don't they don't want to read their books? And if they're if we're not going to make reading time, you know, or read before you go to bed there, they could they can read their book. You can read your book or you can read together, mm -hmm. you know, but they model our feelings and they model what we do. Yeah, we don't we don't realize that. And oh, I, I, so I, much. No, I don't think we realize that a lot of the time. And I think that if I had not gone through all the things that I've gone through over the years and really had to be mindful about how it was affecting my children and really sit down and like ruminate with it and watch my kids and talk to them, I wouldn't know. I would still kind of be in the dark and I would, you know, I'd be one of, I'd be a parent. And again, there's nothing wrong with this. It's just something that we need to talk about and try to kind of try to change this mindset. But, you know, even in my, in my home, I hear this, you know, it's like, well, they're kids and I'm the adult. So it doesn't matter that I'm doing this but they need to do this. And that's not, that's really not the way because they do, they really do model totally. everything that we do. A hundred million percent. I mean, I look at, I, I think I got on, when I got on yesterday and I was talking about something that my daughter was telling, um, telling me about as far as a video that she saw and she didn't like the way that um, the, the people in the video in this uh, psychiatric hospital were being portrayed and because it makes them look like they're crazy and then people think that, oh, only crazy people go to, you know, um, you know, mental health um, therapists, therapists and that sort of thing. And she's right. like, and Really, creates more right. of a stigma, which is not a good thing. Right. Even so more then, in affluent communities, pressure for college puts the focus on. Yeah. Uh, but I want to go back to what Lauren was saying is so scared for my kids. Okay. So, so part of that fear, I think what we need to do as parents is to not necessarily be afraid for our kids, but say, this is what I did with my daughter is, and this is how I was raised is to be very strong and independent and smart. I think you have to teach them how to be smart when they're in a situation and go with their gut feeling, okay? Because my daughter was going into the city by herself between eighth and ninth grade because I taught her, I went with her and I was not afraid. So I taught her to be, this is what you do. You don't keep your phone in your back pocket when you're walking around the streets of Manhattan. You're ask, you know, you wear a crossbody bag. You keep yourself close, stuff close to you. Not to be afraid that you're not going to go, you know, because you want them to go and be independent. But, but to be aware and to be smart. Well, about uh, about like what? How old was she? Between eighth and ninth wow, grade. Wow, look at you. You did that. I want to see if I do that. I can't say that but now. See, but but like, that's ah. what I'm saying. You yeah. don't want to instill that fear in them because then they're going to have a fear to go, and you want them to be able to go. You know, and and, well, and learn right. how mean, to how to navigate I, and feel comfortable and be aware of what to look out for. So, um, which brings me to the fact that like we have to teach our children exactly what you're talking about. We have to arm them with information and make them aware, um, because 
all of a sudden, I don't think any of us realize this. And if you really look at your own lives, I mean, look at your own lives. Look at the, you know, how, how you were from the time that you, you know, left and went to college to the time that you, you know, to the, till, till now, right? I can tell you from my experience, I was not armed with any knowledge whatsoever. And then you get out into the world and you're like, oh my God, I have no idea. I, I have, yeah, and I here's life and you have to navigate. Yeah. I mean, it's great and everything because obviously, you know, you want your kids to do well in school. You want them to get into college. You want them to get good jobs. I mean, this is all just normal stuff that you want for your kids. But we don't put enough emphasis on arming our kids with knowledge and, and life. tools How and to life, deal with life. life skills, which is that's why right. I'm with Jessica and that's why she's been with um, our team for so long is because she kind of takes tutoring from a different perspective because we do really need to arm our kids with this information. They have to have life life tools and skills. And if they have those, you will probably see them, right? See them do better. And also in school, right? going back to what Fern was saying about pressure for college puts a focus on yeah, the the pressure to get into college, you, you see so many kids were so we're working so hard for them to get into a certain college, right? And then we don't hear about in this community, it happens a, a lot, who's coming back, who doesn't make it, who may make it a couple of weeks, who may make it one semester because they've been looking for the wrong thing when they're looking at a college. It's not about the name, it's about the fit and where they're gonna be happy. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're talking about actually in um, what I'm doing with Mary and Tracy Lawrence about talking about how to navigate you know, finding the right fit college for your, for your kid. Let's see, um, Let's just see what else we got. So they have, they, you have to, they have to be able to be strong and persevere. And the only way to do that is sometimes, and Fern talks about this all the time, is let them fail. It's the hardest thing you could ever do in your entire life as a parent. Right. Um, what did Fern say up there? Hi, Robin. Uh, let's see. Sure. Even, Even more, more reason. affluent enabling community. Pressure for college puts a focus on whatever builds a good transcript. Too much fixing of problems and mistakes. We say what we want them that we want them to be independent and self reliant, but our intervening goes too, too much, much against the, the opposite, opposite dependent, dependent exactly. Kids. Yes. So, like I said, the hardest thing is to let them Island fail. Up. Yes, I mean it is really yeah, it is really hard to let your kids and fail. fall to a place where you know where you have to then what we have to help them pick them up, but. And it's the hardest thing you can ever do is to let them get an F or let, you know, their grades go down. And then what are we going to do? We're going to get them tutoring. We're going to get them support. We're going to get them a therapist. You know, I believe 100 million percent is when your kid is struggling, you have to get them into therapy. That's, uh, you know, the situation with my daughter, it, it happened between eighth and ninth grade. You know, and she, what she had to learn was she had to learn coping mechanisms. That's exactly yeah, what she that, had to learn. Yeah, and I think that's, um, it's hard. Ugh, listen, I've been talking about therapy for a long time and it's hard enough to get your, to accept that as an adult, to get rid of the stigma and know that therapy is not a bad thing. And it doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with you. Therapy, it's like, you can go out there and be like, I have, I have something wrong with my back. I go to my acupuncturist or I go to my physical therapist every week, but why can't, why does going to you know therapy for a mental therapy for emotional health, like why is that there's such a stigma behind that? So as adults, we have such a hard time accepting that in our own lives that that might that needs to be a possible option for us um, without there being a stigma. And then imagine, imagine having to broach that topic and take your kids. My daughter, my daughter's gone to therapy. Who she is, and she's not ashamed of it. We're we're a therapy family. We totally Same here. believe it. We, we weren't always like that either. I don't know if you guys saw my um, my talk with uh, Wake Up with Marcy, where we were talking about emotional health and mental health. I mean, I was in, th my mom put me in therapy when I was six. Yeah. And I have to tell you that that's how I grew up. Um, whether, whatever her reasons were for it, she felt I was an unhappy kid, but what being in therapy for that many years of my life, literally, I think I was in therapy throughout my whole younger life. And let me just point something out too. I think that not just putting, you know, putting your child in therapy, but actually I think family counseling, um, is actually really, really advantageous Beneficial. for the family. Yeah, because there's a lot of things we do as parents that we don't even realize that we're doing that may not be good for our children. And it doesn't mean that we are bad people or bad parents. We were just talking about this before yeah, we got and on. and I think that's part of the stigma. I think part of the stigma that is why it's so hard to break the stigma, especially in this community, is that when something happens to our kids, we automatically feel shame 
or guilt because we feel it's a reflective of us as a bad mm -hmm. parent. And that's not necessarily true at all no. because when somebody has mental health issues, it's not because of something necessarily that we've done as a parent, okay? Mm -hmm. There's so many other factors involved, which mm -hmm. some of which could be chemical, okay? That's going on in their in their body. So, so we have to get over the fact that, you know, in, we don't wanna be seen in, in the community as being a bad parent or that we're doing something wrong. We just have to take action and get our kids help. Yeah, that's what we need to do. And and we need to be very aware of the fact that times are not the same. They are right. not the same as totally they were not the same. 10 years ago. I mean, not even 10 years. They're different now than they were 10 years ago. And 10 years ago wasn't that long ago. I moved to Bergen County almost 10 years ago. And things were definitely different back then than they are now. And maybe it's I'm, I'm seeing it more because my kids are getting older. Um, so I have to be more aware of it. But no, times have changed. So we kind of have to try to try to navigate it and try to change with them. And it's not easy. It's not and easy I think it's all. important for us as parents to understand what our kids are going through and, and the way it is out there right now. And not to always say, well, when I was, no, we have to understand what's going on out there. Yeah. You know, there's a huge amount of, of it, it's the way it is, gender fluidity. You know, the minute we say something negative about that, they're gonna shut down and not talk to us. So we need to really be open and understand the climate of our of our of what's going on with our preteens, teens, and what they're growing up into. Because it's not the same at all. It's like night and day from from when and we have to understand that. Right. And help them to navigate, you know, uh why a, a, a friend of theirs may be transitioning. Mm -hmm. You know, what is that about? So that's funny. Um, you know, I was in, I've spent, I spent a lot of times, uh, a lot of time with my kids' friends and a lot of time we we're in the car. <laughs> and as my kids, from the time they were little to the time, to this age now, we do a lot of talking in the car. Hi, Sue. Hi, Sue. Uh, we talk, we talk a lot office. in the car. It's beautiful here. And, um, and the things that come out of the these fourth and sixth graders' mouths, what they talk about in the car. Blow your mind. It blow your mind. Like it's not, it's nothing like what it would have come out of my mouth when I was in sixth or in fourth grade. And it was really funny because I'm like sitting there and I'm listening to this and I'm thinking, all right, I need to say something about this. I need to address this. They they say something about transgenders. I'm like, I have to be it like, um, okay guys, I'm like, do you know what a transgender is? Not being like automatically being like stop talking about that. You shouldn't be talking about that. I asked some questions I'm like, you're talking about this guys. Like, do you actually understand what it means? And I'm laughing because I, we, we, we've talked about it. I've had different conversations with my kids' friends. And I said, um, you know, I may have to call your mom or dad and be like, let them know that this came up in the car, you know, on our ride and have to, to let them know that we talked about it because I mean, they, they know, they know they they're know. exposed to so much more now and they do know. I and mean, you don't want them learning about it in the wrong place men, either. I wish so many... I wish so many men in my life would go to therapy. Yes. No, it's strong of them to go to seek help. And and that's exactly, it is sad. Yep. It is sort of a sign of weakness. A sign of weakness. Yes. And you know, it's really funny. I'm going to, I'm going to tell you something, Lauren, I'm going to give you a little, uh, a little tidbit. And I, I really like my therapist and she's really cool. Um, and not, you know, not all therapists would, you know, necessarily agree with this, but she was telling me because I, I've been sharing my therapy journey. And I said that I started going to therapy by myself because going together was not working because the male side of my, my, uh, my partnership is still like, like you're talking about, like therapy. I don't need therapy. It's a weakness. I don't, I just, we just need couples therapy. And I said, I'm like, yeah, but couples therapy is dealing. It's so is family counseling. It's dealing with each individual person and then finding a way to bring everybody together. But you're right. So my, it's hard for, it's hard for men and it's easier for women to be able to kind of open up and accept and to change a little bit more. And my therapist actually told me, she said, it's actually very common. She's like majority of the couples that come in here, it's, women. it's, it's usually the women that are doing more of the work yeah. and the women are the ones that are really impacting change. Impacting change. Yep. and making a sh major shift in the yep. relationship because a lot of times men are not um, able to deal with that. But again, how are we raising our kids now? Right. Because I always look at my daughter and I look at my son and I think about the things that I deal with on a daily basis and I think about the things that I talk to our community about and that with you guys tell me and I think how every day I think how am I raising my kids? How am I talking to them? Because I want the story to be different 
for them when they get married and they have children. You know? So so when this all came down with my daughter, kids are making tough decisions every day. Yeah, there's tough decisions and, and there's also so much more that they have to think about. So much more stress than, than we have ever thought of, social pressures, all of that. Absolutely, Sue. Um, but what I, what I did with my daughter is when this sort of crisis, and I told her this is a crisis started happening, um, I put her in therapy right away. And it's important to find the right therapist. Like the first therapist she had, she did not resonate with. So I said, okay, we need to find somebody that you do. And right now she knows that she, now that she's in college and the transition into her first year of college has been, you know, it's definitely a transition and it's a tough time. And I told her, you ever need to talk to your therapist? She is there for you. That's it. And your daughter she is, is your there daughter for is you. 19, right? She's turning 19 on 19, Sunday. 19, 19 on Sunday. Yeah. And that's the most important thing that she has a support structure other than me or my husband that she can go to whenever she feels she needs emotional help where she's dealing with a situation that she doesn't know how to deal with. And, you and know, I'm teaching her that. I mean, that is such a value. It is actually a value. Yes, because she's going to take it with her in the rest of her and life. And that's when what she, I was she, taught. When she deals with... And, but and most, that's what but that's I was very, taught. That's not actually like very part of the norm. Actually, It's most, not. My mother not. was totally ahead of her time. But that's a whole other story. So, But yeah, but, but I went... When I was in college, I was in a relationship that I felt... I loved him. We had a very passionate relationship. And I was addicted to him. I was definitely addicted to him. And I knew that I couldn't get out without help. So I not only saw in therapy, in a therapist and a group therapy, I have had, I can tell you that that group therapy situation was what helped me get out of that relationship. And and there's not a lot of group therapy yeah, around here. And teaching, you know, and teaching. group therapy. It's, and, and, you know, the schools, I mean, I'm very fortunate. Our school district, um, our guidance um, guidance um, department is amazing. They talk a lot about mindfulness. They do a lot of um, groups, uh, group uh, things with the girls, group things with the boys, and they're just amazing. And a lot of these schools, hopefully, this, they'll, they'll start to kind of following each other's footsteps. I was um, I was asked to go to Pascack Hills in April because they, Pascack, Pascack Hills High School, um, talking about being innovative, moving forward, they actually are talking a lot about mental health and That's with their awesome. teens. And I know they have an event coming up about the kids growing up overexposed now, but what they, they've been doing for the last couple of years is that they are having um, a wellness fair for the teenagers at lunchtime so it's not for the parents it's for the teens and what the, they have a specific wellness counselor and they bring in alternative holistic um, um options and different modalities to actually specifically teach these kids how to cope differently with the stresses of being a teen which i think is so well and and like you said, positive living. coping mechanisms yeah positive what are of positive course, coping course, mechanisms positive. Uh, that they can do, you know, a lot of times with my daughter, when, when there was one specific girl that was really super mean to her and saying she was a bad friend and whatnot. Yeah, whatever. There was a comment up here that we should go back to above that. Yes, I think right, Stacy. Yeah, Stacy's. Um, hold um, on one second. That she needed to hear me say to her, it's okay for you not to be friends with her anymore. It was really interesting. It's like she needed my approval or my okay for her to for her to realize you don't need to be friends with this girl if she's mean you know even though you've known her since you were four three four years old you don't need to be friends with her anymore because you're growing in a different direction so and these are and again these are also things that you're going to learn um for your adult life because these are things that we didn't i didn't learn when i was a kid and then and, and you're an adult and you're dealing with friendships and work relationships and that sort of thing and they're toxic and if we're not teaching our kids how to deal with those sorts of situations they get up they get out there in the world they're like oh my gosh right and so, you don't need to be a friend of that with that so person. stacy uh, my daughter was diagnosed with juvenile bipolar disorder and the toughest thing for me as a parent is being terrified that other kids won't understand and won't want to be friends with her her school, her school has classes on understanding kids with thank differences, goodness. which thank goodness, that's wonderful. That's our, our school. But is you know what, that's like a that good, too. that's a really good point, Stacey, is that people don't understand really what bipolar disorder is, you know, and that's part of the stigma is they don't really understand, oh, you know, bi and there's so many different levels of bipolar disorder, right? I was just talking to somebody yesterday who has bipolar disorder. And, you know, if you meet her in a meeting, you would never know. Right. But she deals with it in a different, she's learned how to manage it and deal with it without drugs. 
now, which is really an amazing, that's a whole nother topic. But, but I, I think to help them understand what their differences are and to, and to, that is part of us helping them break the stigma. Um, there was another cut. Stacy said also super tough to find a support group for parents that isn't about having, that isn't about having a kid with autism. Yeah. I, I think that a lot of the therapists that I know around the area are starting to, to create groups, groups for teens. Yeah. which I think is re I know they're having something at the body positive place, mm -hmm. which I think is really, really important. Mm -hmm. Um, because I can tell you that group group helped me more than individual really to deal with this situation when I was in college, because what the reason why for me, and I'll, I'll share this with you. I remember this. There was a guy in my, in my therapy group that I could not stand. Right. And I'm a pretty very open person. And I like, he was very bigoted and this was in Westchester because I live in, I'm from New York. And he was a, he was a fireman, nothing against firemen. Okay. Uh, he was very close minded and he was racist and he was a bigot and, and, but he was very outspoken and we just were like oil and water. But I have to tell you, he was the most impactful. What he said to me impacted me and made me realize more than anybody else in that group. He said to me, Jessica, do you realize that by aligning yourself with this person that I was having a relationship with, you're actually creating a situation in your life where you're not going to be happy? He said, life is about being happy, isn't it? You know, and he, hearing it from this person who I really didn't like, who actually over time of being in the group learned to kind of like me as a person, we kind of, you know, I respected him after that. Mm -hmm. And, and he and what he said really made me realize that isn't life about being happy and not struggling? He said, you're creating more struggle in your life by being with this person. And that's not what life is all about. You deserve to be happy. Right. And, and for me as a college student to hear that from a person that I really didn't respect, it kind of changed my whole, he really impacted me and helped me realize that I do deserve to be happy. Yeah. You know, um, isn't that what life should yeah, be about? And that's, I mean, we have enough, we have enough of a is, issues as, you know, mothers about that when it comes to self-worth and value. And we, but again, it goes to back happy. to modeling. Yeah. You yeah know? It's all about modeling. We really need to be happy as parents and we need to teach our kids that they need to still have fun and be happy. Uh, and that's what, when I go into the home actually and sit with a kid and we're talking about learning how to organize their life and their work, which is a big problem with the transition into high school, I say to them, you need to block out time to be happy mm -hmm. and to have fun. I'm not telling you, you need to do your schoolwork 24 mm seven. -hmm. You need to block out a time where you're going to go get your nails done, block out a time for your soccer game, block out a time to hang out with your friends, block out a time to go on to and play um, whatever that video game is that everybody's <laughs> Fortnite. playing. Fortnite. Fortnite. <laughs> right. Block out Fortnite time. Don't, you know, change your whole, but, but block out time to do your homework and to study and review and be prepared for a test. Um, just to close up, cause we could be sitting here for like know, another half an hour this. for 30 minutes. Um, I think it's, you know, it's really important. Um, you know, again, we were talking about the whole therapy thing. If you think that there is something, don't be afraid of therapy. Um, we have, you know, Julia here, um, talks, um, a lot. Julia Hoxett talks a lot about how therapy looks. Um, if you guys have, ever have any questions, she's amazing to talk to. If you have any questions about that, um, definitely talk to her. Um, therapy can be really expensive. And I always bring that up because I think that, that, that that's something that people avoid um, when it comes when when they want to go to therapy that's a huge factor the money part of it because a lot of times insurance nowadays is not really paying anything for it but keep this in the back of your head and i say this all the time even for you guys for you moms you know who really need to invest in yourself um just taking a time out and doing something for yourself if we're going to invest so many of us in this county invest thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on tutors uh, for academics so they can get good grades and get into colleges for sports for coaches so your kids get scholarships Men the mental health aspect of it and getting it's a therapist so and investing in that is just as important because if your kid 
ends up being a star football player at Duke or, you know, goes to MIT, that's great. That's wonderful, right? They could get a great job. But if they're dealing with all this life stuff later on and they don't never were taught or given the tools, it's it they, they need to. And here's the thing. We need to be involved with our kids. That is so important. And not on a micromanaging level. We don't need to micromanage our kids' lives. And but we need to, to be open with them. We need to be talk to them. We need to show them that we care and that we're around and even for me, I'm very busy. I'm all over the place, but I always let my kids know I will drop whatever I need. Um, if they're going through something and they need me, we need to be just be there for our kids. We need to be aware, mindful, and be a part of their lives. And it's you guys so know that I own my tutoring business and mm -hmm. I have for seven years. I can tell you, honestly, I feel putting them in therapy if they're in a situation where it's critical is more important than tutoring. And I'll tell you exactly why. Because if they're going to start to shut down, and something is seriously, severely wrong, we need to get them help because it could turn into a crisis so easily and so fast, and they're not gonna be able to perform in school anyway, okay? I mean, ac when academics fall, it's a symptom, in my opinion, of something else that's going on. There's always something else going on. Mm -hmm. Whether it's a struggle in school or they don't like the teacher or they're feeling they're being bullied or they were just cut from a team in sports or whatever it is, emotional health, in my opinion, is paramount. Health in general. You know, if your kid is sick and can't go to school, what do you do? You take them to the doctor. Mm -hmm. If your kid's in a crisis and doesn't and can't get out of bed, because I'm an emotional, you take them to a doctor or a therapist. Yeah, you know, and it's it's the most important. Yeah, I'm actually going to be doing a lot of marketing for my Reiki business because I really want to work with um, kids and children. I do think that if we had a big bag of money, I keep saying this: if we had a big bag of money and we could just spend our money on a, on a therapist on a uh, on a uh, Reiki or some sort of spiritual healer and then like a nutrition or you know physical coach like you're just like it would be great it would be great if we could just have all of those like wrapped into one and be able to afford it but you know definitely um the mental health aspect is really important so thanks guys for being here with us um what is Reiki by the way oh I'll um I'll message you Lauren We'll be here forever if I start talking about that. It's uh, good stuff. It's, it's energy great. work. It's energy work. It's energy um, healing we all and balancing. We're all about energy. Yeah. Um, so I want to thank you so much for coming on. Jessica, I love actually, Jessica loves coming on. We're just one, I do. one on one and talking about this stuff. And, you know, we don't, again, we don't want to be Debbie Downers because I know it's so, parents, it's so hard to have this discussion, but we need to have it um, so we can see less of uh, the. Uh, the newspaper articles and the posts on Facebook about which uh, it's tragic. which it really is tragic. which kid has uh, unfortunately um, left us uh, too soon. And there, you know, we got to remember too that our kids, th what we feel and what we think and our respect and everything is so important to them. And they think, and even our happiness, our own happiness as parents, our children, is so important. And that they they internalize a lot of that stuff. And a lot they of times, see and feel yeah, they see and feel everything, they, everything. And, and they won't necessarily talk about it. So um, we need to be mindful Especially of the fact. Especially as they become teenagers, yeah. they talk about less. We just need to be mindful that they, you know, they, they deal with a lot of stuff on the inside that we don't even see. And they can put on a good face on the outside. So um, thank you so much for uh, being Thanks, here with everyone. us. Great um, feedback. Jessica, thank you so much for coming yeah. and talking with us. We You're are welcome. so happy you came and I'm talked very, with can us. You guys and tell, you guys I'm commented. very passionate about this yes. and feel very yes. strongly. And my mother was as well. So I'm carrying on her legacy. Great. Thank you so much. All right, guys. You have a great day. If you guys have, have any questions, yeah, if you have any questions, if there's anything that you want us to talk about specifically, bring bring in anybody to talk about, please let us know because we are we're more here. than happy to we're do that. Here. So Jessica Bush, you know where to find me and uh, we're always here for you. Have a great day. Have a good day. Bye guys. See ya. Bye.